Hello and welcome and happy Halloween. Now, if there's one video game company that's known for its family friendly games, it's definitely Nintendo. But even though Nintendo seems to be family friendly on no surface, if you go deep you'll find some truly unnerving and terrifying areas and locations in their games. One thing that helps to lend these places to be so creepy is the element of surprise. In a spooky and creepy game, you would expect these places to be creepy, but not in, a, in these kinds of games that are meant for kids. It makes it feel out of place and makes it stand out in your mind. But without further ado, let's count down the top 10 creepiest areas and places in Nintendo games. Number 10. Big Moose Hunt from Super Mario 64. Starting off this list, we have a spooky level from the Nintendo 64 classic Super Mario 64. Like most games on this list, Super Mario 64 is a pretty light-hearted game. But don't let that fool you, because even the brightest games can have dark and terrifying secrets inside. Big Moose Hunt starts off like your typical run-of-the-mill haunted house. The first thing you'll notice about Big Moose Hunt is the music. It's a little unnerving, but nothing terrifying. You walk into the mansion, and then you see some doors. You also see that there's a second floor, but there's no stairs to go up there. So you go into the first door, and then you see that there's a piano, a level door, and a red coin. So you decide to go over to get the red coin on a piano. No, 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 run, run, no, run, Yeah, this has terrified countless kids. Anyway, that's not the only creepy thing in the mansion. If you go downstairs to the basement, you'll see that there's a merry-go-round. And this booze has some really out-of-place music that really shouldn't be in this game. In this game, this should be really spooky music, but it's, it's, since it's happy, it makes it seem even creepier. Anyway, you beat the booze and you get a star. There are a few other creepy places in the mansion, but that's pretty much it. Anyway, one final thought is it's never really explained what happened to people in this mansion. Did they once live here and then they died and became ghosts? But Mario games really aren't known for their epic storytelling, so it's it's not that mysterious. All right, let's just move on. Number 9! Caves from Pokemon Red and Blue Now, in real life, caves are pretty spooky, so it's no surprise that caves in video games should be spooky too. There are two major caves in Pokemon Red and Blue that are spooky, Cerulean Cave and Mount Moon. First, let's talk about Mount Moon. Mount Moon is a huge cave you go into to progress in the game. The cave is very dark and mysterious, and it being in 8 bits makes it feel even more unnerving. There are a few NPCs, so it's not completely empty of people. And the worst thing you have to fear in this cave is Ozupat, so... Not really a whole lot of monsters there. Anyway, moving on to the next cave, Cerulean Cave. Cerulean Cave is the last cave you get to go into the game and fight the final boss Mewtwo. You can't get there until you fight the Elite Four. And once you do, this fat guy will finally let you in. And when you get there, the music. It's terrified, and it's kind of the music you listen to when you go into the basement. And the cave actually has very powerful Pokemon in it. Anyway, progress from the cave until you get to the final boss Mewtwo. Now imagine going through a cave with no people in it and getting to Mewtwo. It was a psychic monster. Imagine that. That is terrifying. Once you do beat me or two, oh, use your master ball like I like to do. All you have to do to get out of the cave is just use the escape rope. Number 8. The Shadow Temple from Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. 
the Shadow Temple is the fourth temple in the game. And you get there after you beat the Wattle Temple. You go back to Kikiri Village and see the whole village is on fire. You see a mysterious being come up from the well. Its name is Bongo Bongo. You fight it, but you lose. It attacks you and knocks you unconscious. And when you wake up, you see Sheik. And she teaches you the Nosferatu of Shadow. And you play it and you get to the Shadow Temple. Now, the first thing you'll notice about the Shadow Temple, like most of the places on this list, is the music. It's very empty, and you can hear shrieks and cries of people. Now, the first time I played this was back when I was around 13 or 14, and it was at 3 a.m. in the morning because I couldn't sleep, and I was pretty terrified. I couldn't get back to sleep, so I kept playing the game, and uh, I was very sleep deprived for that day, and that was kind of a bad idea, but anyway, there are also things that I'm pretty surprised Nintendo was able to get away with it. Sickles, guillotines, skulls and skeletons, and most of all, dead hands. Now these things are utterly horrifying. This, they scream, and then they freeze you, and their hands can grab you, and they slowly walk away in a motion that makes your skin crawl, and then they bite you. Uh, these things are <laughs> Once you do get to the boss of the Shadow Temple, Bongo Bongo, use the lens of truth to fight him. But this boss is the most mysterious part of the temple. I mean, who was he? Was he a guy who betrayed the royal family and was tortured and executed? There was a theory that the Shadow Temple was a torture place to torture and execute people who either betrayed the royal family or committed terrible court crime. This would explain all the torture equipment and dead bodies. But it's never explained in the game, so I guess this fan theory is the closest we'll ever get to knowing the mystery of the Shadow Temple. Number 7 Creepy Staple from Paper Mario A Thousand Year Door. Now, Paper Mario A Thousand Year Door is pretty dark for a Mario game. I mean, look at this, look what happens to Peach at the end of the game. How did this get an E for everyone rating game? If there's one area of the game that's caused me more sleep depreciation than the rest, it's probably Creepy Steeple. Get to Creepy Steeple, you need to go through some pretty freaky woods. And once you get there, you're instantly drowsed in fear. The music is freaky, and you have no clue what to expect. As you go on in the steeple, you see enemies like Boos and Sweeples. And you finally get to a stained glass picture of a mysterious figure. Who is this guy? Did he once own the steeple? Speaking of which, it being a church steeple makes this place even creepier. I mean, churches are supposed to be holy places, not some spooky haunted place, which makes it even creepier and adds to the atmosphere. Turns out, the monster and creepy steeple was just Dupless, who honestly is a pretty cool guy. But even with Dupless, Creepy Steeple was still one bone-chilling building. Number 6. World of Nothing, Super Paper Mario. Now, Super Paper Mario is a lot like Paper Mario Thousand Year Door in the sense that they're both extremely dark games for Mario standards. There are lots of points in the game that are pretty dark, one of them being the World of Nothing. In Chapter 6 of the game, Mario goes to Samuel's Kingdom. In Samuel's Kingdom, Mario must have the duel of a hundred. He must fight 100 Samuel guys. Mario only manages to get through around a quarter of them before a void comes and eats the entire kingdom. Mario manages to get back to Flipside, but the door to the kingdom still remains, even though the whole kingdom has been sucked up by the void. So Mario and his friends decide to go through into the door back to Samuel's kingdom. And what they find is horrifying and chilling. What they find is a world of nothing. The background is white, the music is ominous, and there is nothing. There is some furniture, but everyone who lived here is dead. Everyone who lived here doesn't exist anymore. Imagine right now if you woke up and you woke up in a literal world of nothing. Imagine how scary that would be. Anyway, Mario and friends continue on and they keep walking and walking and walking until they find Mr. L. They fight him and his robots and beat him and get the next pure hole, which has been torn into stone. Then they return to Flipside. Mr. L on the other hand is killed by Nementio. 
stay tuned until the end of the video to see what happens next. Number 5. The kind of Alex from Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. Oh man, Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask is one of my favorite games of all time. But if there's one part that sticks out the most to me, it's a Kana Valley. There's so much to talk about in Kana Valley. There's Gimdals, there's the Fable of Akaton, then to a Gimdal, there's Shop, there's the Kana Castle, there's so much to talk about. In the Kana Castle, Link fights the King of the Kana Kingdom, and once Booming Kingdom was met with a terrible fate. Once Link beats the King, he is taught the Elegy of Emptiness, which gives Link the ability to cast a shell of himself, which is Pretty creepy. Then Link makes his way to the final place in Ikana Valley, Stone Towel Temple. The music here, unlike the rest of the places on this list, which have pretty creepy and spooky music, but the music here is sad and depressing and makes you feel like your journey is hopeless. Once Link makes his way through Stone Towel Temple and beats the boss, peace is returned to Ikana Valley, and Link can move on to the final area of the game. Level 4! Gate of the Past from Oathbound. Once Ness collects the eight melodies and awakens his power, he returns to Cyril Valley with Dr. Andronite to create the machine that will send Ness and friends to fight the final boss, Gygas. But the only problem is it can't take living things. So, Dr. Andronite takes out their brains and puts them in robots. Yeah, that's the sensible thing to do. Not quite fix the machine and make it be able to take life forms. Jeez. Then they are teleported to the final area of the game, Cave of the Past. Now the Cave of the Past, the music is creepy and it's very mysterious. Once Ness and his friends make it through the cave, they fight one of the most disturbing bosses of all time, Gygas. Now his face is horrendous and the music starts up awesome and becomes very creepy and disturbing. Now there was a fan theory go around about this actually being about an abortion. He kind of looks, his face kind of looks like a fetus. You got for his, get to him for going through intestines and his dialogue suggested. But even if it's not, this is still one of the disturbing bosses Nintendo has ever made. Number 3 A Cemetery from Old Found Beginnings. You know how in most games the spooky levels are either for the middle of the game or end of the game? Well, Old Found Beginnings, its spooky level happens right at the start of the game. The game starts off with the main character, Nintendo sitting in a chair, minding his own business, when all of a sudden a lamp comes to life. He fights it, and defeats it, then he goes throughout the house defeating other objects. Then he gets a basement key, goes in the basement, and gets a taste of what's to come. The music is creepy, and it being 8 bits doesn't help, but this is just an appetizer for what's to come. The portal gust that sweeps through Nintendo's house has brought the entire frickin' cemetery back to life. I mean, you kind of... that's... Kind of a problem, you know. To make things even worse, a little gore had gone to the cemetery and got kidnapped by the zombies. So, unfortunately, as much as you don't want to, you gotta go over to the cemetery to progress in the game. Anyway, as you get closer to the cemetery, you'll start to notice that trees start to get less and less leaves until there's no leaves on them at all. The music here is ear rattling, and there's a lot of random encounters with ghosts and zombies. Then, when you get there, you even see what appears to be either a priest or a caretaker. That doesn't matter anyway, because this guy has gotten screwed. I mean, imagine if you're walking in a cemetery, and then one day, all the bodies come back to life. I mean, you put that on number one worst job of all time. I mean, jeez. But you just gotta wonder, why doesn't this guy just go with Nintendo out of the cemetery? And why doesn't he ask why or how he got here? But, it doesn't matter because you ask you the little girl and you get out of the cemetery. But before you can take her back to your mother, the male catches you. And he gives- it bribes you with money and then he gives you the zoo key to go to the next area. On a condition that you- she will tell her mom that the male was the one who saved her. I mean, this guy is worse than Trump for sure, I mean, just- Number 2! Lavender Town for Pokemon Red and Blue. 
Now, you all saw this coming. This is everyone's number cho one choice for a creepiest place in a Nintendo game. While I do certainly find it creepy, I'm only putting it on number two just because of how much everyone talks about. Give you a brief summary of Lavino Town, it goes like this. You get to Lavino Town and you find out that a man named Mr. Fuji has gone missing. The last place he was seen was in Pokemon Towel. What's Pokemon Towel, you may ask? Well, it's a grave for dead Pokemon. I mean, rated E for everyone, kids. Anyway, Team Rocket had stormed Pokemon Tower, and now it's your job to save Mr. Fuji. So you go in the tower and see people who are trying to pay their respects to your dead Pokemon. You go up the stairs and you see Blue, and you have an epic Pokemon battle with him, which you win. Then you start having random encounters with ghosts, but you don't have a self scope, so you can't catch them, so you can't progress any further in the tower. So you go throughout the game until you get the self scope. Then you go back to the Pokemon Tower, and you can finally see and catch the ghosts. So you go through, and you f see women who are possessed. Yeah, for everyone, kids! You get past everything, then you get to the boss, Marowak, who's Cubone's dead mobile, by the way. You defeat Marowak, and you get to Team Rocket. Then you defeat Team Rocket, and you rescue Mr. Fuji. Then you go to Mr. Fuji's house, and he gives you the Poke Flute, which you can use to progress in the game. Now, this might be the end of the story of Lavender Town, but not the end of the creepiness. But number one thing everyone talks about when talking about Lavender Town is the music. Here, have a listen. Now, what do I think of music? Personally, I think it's awesome. I mean, it's so creepy and unnerving. I love it. But there is a rumor, and creepy pasta, that this music has caused kids in their early teens to commit suicide. But this is total bullcrap, because I'm in my teens, and I never committed suicide listening to music a lot. But even if it was true, do you really think Nintendo could get away with kids dying because of a video game. I mean, just look what happened to the seizure episode. Do you really think Nintendo could have covered all this up? But anyway, there'll been those Pokemon Tower music, which I think's equally creepy. Anyway, that out of the way, let's move on to number one. Number one! Rival Twix from Super Paper Mario, continuing the story from number six. Mario goes back to Flipside after he gets the pure hulk which is contained in his stone. He goes back to Merlin. Merlin says he has no idea how to fix the pure hulk. But then, the Benzio comes in and kills the three of them, and then he leaves. Then, Mario wakes up in hell. Well, actually no, it's more like the Greek underworld, but you know what I'm saying. It's called the underwear. Wow. That's such a great name. I never want to go here. Uh, anyway, anyway, uh, what, that's what I'll say. The underwear is the place where everyone's sins outweigh their good deeds goes when they die. Anyway, Mario is all alone, and he has to wander through the underwear until he meets Queen Jadis, who wants him to go find her daughter and someone who fell into the river twigs. Now, to be honest, the underwear is not that bad. I mean, no one's being tortured or anything. But the River Twigs is where the really bad people go. The River Twigs is based off the River Styx from Greek mythology, and it goes to show because when you fall down, you see friends that try to grab you, but are really freaky. They could be souls trying to grab Mario to try to get out of the river they have been punished to. But the freakiest part of it all is the music. You can hear people cry for help and ask Queen Jadis for forgiveness. Anyway, when you go to the bottom of the riverbed, you see a door and you immediately go into it into the sewers and continue on until you rescue Luigi. The River Twigs is by far the creepiest place 
I've ever seen in a Nintendo game. If there are any creepy places in Nintendo games that I forgot to mention, put it in the comments section below. Anyway, I hope you have a happy Halloween. <laughs>